Good morning. Wake up, Awatuki. We will be right back. All right. Well, we're going to talk today、uh, about、uh, you know, really being、uh, those who who gather people into the house of God and bring them into God's family. And so this is going to be a kind of a few weeks of working through this process. We're starting here in Luke chapter ten, and、uh, Jesus is is about to send out the seventy、uh, to begin to go out and and really spread the gospel. It says here in, in Luke chapter ten, verse one. After these things, the Lord appointed seventy others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And I think that that Jesus is doing the same thing now when he's sending us out to. Uh, to prepare the way, we're much like John the Baptist,、mm-hmm. right? John the Baptist was preparing the way for Jesus, and here he sends the seventy. Says, "Okay, I want you to go out and begin to minister and prepare the way for the places I'm about to come." They were his advance team. They were right.、Yes. They were the they were the street team. Yes. Right. And so, but we're that same thing that he's prepa- there's people. You know, yes, he wants everybody saved. But there's that timing where each individual is just about there, right? And he sends us out to go before him and help repair that way. So I thought this was interesting. But you know, as I always seem to be with these passages of scripture,、right. the first three words, like boom, set off this alarm to me. It says after these things. So what things? Right. Right. Because if it says it's after these things, it's important that we remember what things just happened before we read the next. So it gives us the context to understand. Why it's happening the way it's happening, right? And so、uh, we go back to chapter nine in Luke, in verse one, and it says, "Then." Now I realize it says "then," so we could actually keep going, <laughs> and we can keep going all the way back to Genesis chapter one. Probably, but we're not going to do that. We won't do that today because we don't have that much time. No.、Uh, but here it says,、uh, chapter nine, verse one. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. So he gave them two things: power, which is important. And the authority to use it, right? Right. We need to have power and authority. We can't have just one. You can have authority but no power. That doesn't work. Doesn't work. Or you could have, right? You could have power and but no, no authority. authority. <laughs> right. It's like when you were left in charge of your siblings when you were a kid. You were given authority, but you had no power. Or that's right. <laughs> They're not going to do anything you say. No. Worst case, you're going to tell mom when they get home. Mom's going to be annoyed and not do anything about it. Right. Right. So, <laughs> but he gave them this to do what to. To have authority over demons, over demonic power, the kingdom of darkness, right, and over and to cure diseases. That's the two things they're given,、mm-hmm. and, and and God always likes to equip us for a purpose, right. And so then we find out what the purpose is. Verse two: He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. So He gave them power and authority to have authority and power over the dark kingdom、mm-hmm. and to heal diseases.、Mm-hmm. And then they were sent to preach the kingdom. Right, the, the the new covenant, right, that was coming, it wasn't quite there yet, right, to, to prepare to the, the way, kingdom, right, and to heal the sick, and so、uh, it goes on, and we get down to、uh, verse six, and it says, so they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. So, good news is they did what Jesus said to do. That's probably good advice. They did what he equipped them to do and what he sent them to do. Yes, he equipped them first, and then he sent. Then he sent them, and they went and they were preaching the gospel. And healing the sick. So we think about you know when it comes to evangelism, when it comes to, to those things for us, it's really about a very singular focus.、Yes. It is go preach the gospel and heal the sick,、mm-hmm. bring healing to people's lives. When you do those things, you're preparing the way for、mm-hmm. Jesus to now come into their life.、Mm-hmm. And so this is what they did. They were to preach the gospel, not to preach their doctrine. Right. Right. We all have doctrine. We should actually. Paul tells us we should know our doctrine. Right. But that's not what we need to preach. Right. We should know what we believe and why we believe it. But what we preach is the kingdom, the new covenant. Right. And so they could have went and and been focused on all. This is the way our doctrine is different than what your doctrine is. <laughs> right. That doesn't prepare the way for Jesus. No. That doesn't set people free. No. Bringing the gospel of what Jesus has done for them, and bring the healing. Show them this is what we're talking about. Right. And so then we go down to verse ten. The apostles, when they had returned, told him all that they had done. So they told him what they did. Well, here's what we did, Jesus. We went, we preached the gospel, and we healed. And so then, what Jesus does is says, then he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. 
which the, the city Bethsaida means, it, it, the, the, the name means house of fish. So they went out to dinner. <laughs> That's not what they did. <laughs> no. Right? What was he teaching them to be fishers of men, wasn't right. he? So he took them to a place called the house of fish. To teach them about being fishers of men. That's great. But the point here is, is that Jesus gave them an assignment and an equipping to do the assignment. They did it. And now when they come back, now he can take them deeper. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times we're, we're wanting the deeper things. We want, we want Jesus to give us the next thing. Show me the next thing to do. And, and not in a condemning way, but in, in reality, he's kind of going, well, but did you do the other thing I gave you to do? <laughs> right. You haven't done that thing yet. Right. Do that. And now we can go to a level deeper, which is what happens. So then he goes on and we see some things that happen. We see this same ministry in action. Uh, and it, it further here in chapter 9, verse 11, when the multitude knew it, they followed him. Right? He meant to have this intimate mentoring session with his with his mm-hmm. disciples but you know there's a lot of gospel and healing going on so people are drawn right and they all show up and it says what did Jesus do uh, he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom and healed those who had need of healing right. so Jesus again by example showing this is my focus right watch Jesus focus through his entire ministry it's those two things mm-hmm. bring the gospel heal people mm-hmm and so uh, then it went on. And so there's some things that they learned. Remember we said it was after these things. Mm-hmm. So the first thing they had to learn is they had power and authority over demons and to uh, bring healing. Then they learned to go do those things. Right. And they watched Jesus doing the same thing. Uh, we watch multiplication. What happens here? Jesus feeding the 5,000. They, they learn when there's resource needed uh, that it's there. You've been given this purpose whenever you need resource it's available. All you do is you give thanks to God for that resource because he's already given it to you right. and see it take place. We see Peter confess Christ. You have to know who Jesus is right. to be successful uh, walking in this ministry. Uh, and then we go down to Jesus transfigured and his Peter, James and John getting a much even more clear picture of who Jesus is and what he's about. And then we read in verse 37 about healing taking place again, the mm-hmm. gospel being preached again. And then he talks about avoiding division mm-hmm. right his disciples are arguing with each other about who's the greatest right and you know isn't that what what the division comes it actually says in, in verse 46 then a dispute arose among them what does the enemy do he sees good things going on he likes to bring a dispute right and his favorite subject is pride mm-hmm. and uh, position right right that, that was his problem right pride and position right so he tries to bring that jesus corrects that and then he forbids sectarianism meaning he the, the disciples said well there's this guy over here he's healing people in your name but we don't know who he is he's not one of our group right right and so jesus says leave it alone i'm paraphrasing <laughs> leave it alone. right right he's doing it in my name if, if he's not against us then he's for us right uh, now privately you don't know what jesus really thought but what was important is he told his disciples, leave it alone. Mm-hmm. If it's not in order, God will take care of it. Right, right. So these are the things that happen before we get to the point right here of Jesus saying, now after these things, now the Lord sent out the 70. And so there's some things that we get, we have to have settled in our hearts to be prepared to be ministers, to spread that gospel the way God wants us to. And so, you know, we want to get a hold of those things. The biggest things you want to get a hold of is my purpose is to be one. You know, it isn't always, you know, we think, well, I don't preach the gospel. But when you live the gospel, you're preaching it. Right. When you live in it and people see it in your life, it is a way of preaching the gospel to those around you. And be available to be someone who brings healing to people's lives. Mm-hmm. If it's physical mm-hmm. healing, emotional healing, their families are in trouble, their their finances are in trouble, that you're one who there who has the answers mm-hmm. uh, for them and can minister to them. And that is going to open up the door for Jesus in their lives. Absolutely. Because our goal is really not to just make converts. That's not what the Great Commission was all about, Right. But to make disciples, we want to encourage people to follow Jesus. So if you're following Jesus and people can see you living, you know, preaching the gospel by living the gospel and bringing healing to others, they're going to want to follow Jesus too. Which is, you know, what what you bring up that there's a difference, you know, when we look through these things, and and I didn't read some of these passages, but you see some in here where it talks about what you need to give up to be a follower of Christ, a follower of Christ, understanding that who he's talking to at that time, these are men who were going to be disowned by their families and probably lose all they had because they're choosing to follow Jesus. Most of us, you're watching today, probably don't live in that place where that's going to happen. It could be, but it's not likely that that's the the extent to which we, we, what we might have to give up. But there was a difference between being a believer in Jesus and being a follower of Jesus. You know, it's okay to be a believer. You're going to heaven. 
right? If you just choose to be a, a, a believer in Jesus, right? John 3, 16 doesn't tell us that whosoever believes and is a faithful follower will have everlasting life. Just believe. You got the everlasting life. Um, and so if you choose not to be a follower, we'll see you in heaven. Uh, but we'll get to share all kinds of cool stories about the things we got to do. Because when you chose to be a follower, now there's an adventure here in this life mm -hmm. that we get to be a part of. And, you know, God's adventure is awesome. Yes. Right. And so, so we want to be not just a believer, which is great. That's the first step, but to become a follower mm -hmm. and to become a follower of Jesus, a follower of Jesus and what he's doing and part of all the great adventure that he has for us. All right. So let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for, for today. I thank you that, that those who are watching today, that they are inspired to become not just believers, but become followers and be those who are walking in what we've been given to, to spread the gospel of the kingdom and to bring healing to those around us and that we would be moved uh, in those things and directed in those things and begin to see the opportunities in front of us to do those very things. And we thank you for it. I pray blessing over all those watching today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, don't forget, be in church this weekend. If you're in our area, in Ahwatukee, in Phoenix area, we'd love to see you at our location or one of the other Living Word locations in Mesa or Gilbert or Scottsdale. If you're not in our area, then go to church where you live. But we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend.